Hello guys, yesterday I showed problems I had with the Anzani trying to get the flywheel off because we got spark problems and I tried a two leg puller and I was, wasn't really happy about that I had lots of suggestions, thanks everybody someone suggested the actual nut itself because it came a few turns and went stiff pulled the flywheel off and that sounded pretty logical and the sort of engineering that would be employed around this period but it's only a two flat can I zoom in? it's only a two flat uh, uh, nut so I was very dubious but thinking about it I thought yes that's probably what happens the actual nut is, is the draw tool itself that's uh, I became more and more convinced of this. So that was yesterday. So working on that principle today. Let's pan back. I've got a piece of scrap metal. And I've welded, just very roughly, a couple of bolts. So that the bolts drop in those holes there. Then I was able to get a spanner. And uh, going through all my spanners including some quite large wrenches. This was the best one. It's 11 sixteenths air and it fits as good as just the amount of play I've got. So I thought, well, we'll go with the gamble. Put a piece of tube on this and the bar and hey presto, it came undone. You come to a stiff point and then the thing is lifted off. So I was really chuffed about that. It's so easy to rush in and destroy things. I've mentioned, uh, I did a, vi a video on seagulls. You will not believe how many seagulls have got broken cranks and destroyed because someone put a puller on the flywheel. You must not do that. I've expressed that in another video. Anyway, this now says he, hopefully, Lift off. It's undone. There we go. It's off. Oh, that's all nice and clean. Poor spark. Have we got a good magnet? Yes, that's very good. So I won't have to do anything with that. A weak magnet can sometimes cause problems. As can a condenser going down, let's see if I can zoom in a bit better. Just drop that over. There we go. You can do better than that. Go on in you go. That's better. The points should be under here. Oh, what do they look like? Oh, they look quite nice. Where's me magnifying glass? Excuse me a minute. Oop, oop, over here somewhere. Right, I'm back. Are <coughs> they pitted? They're nasty. No, could do with a clean up. They're not pitted. If the points are pitted, it's a good sign that the capacitor is open circuit. They do one or two things. They go leaky, they go open circuit, or they go short circuit. As we've got something of a spark, I can rule out the actual coil. Unless, of course, it's gone short of turns, which I don't think so. So, I'm going to put a, a meter on the, on the uh, condenser. And there's no evidence of sparking, so I'll clean up the points. Generally clean round. Put the flywheel back on and we'll see if we've got a, a decent spark, yes or no. What if I can get in better with the camera with those points? Blinking leads are in the way. Sorry about this. Get down there. Can I? Ah, too far. Can't expect too much. No, that's as close as I can get. Sorry about that. But you can see the action of the... It's beautifully made. It's quite clean. Pleased with that. So all in all, we're making progress. I 
put the camera aside and have another film after about a cup of tea. Shall we get on? Okay, I'm back. I've undone the clamp to the little capacitor, condenser, call it what you will. Show me age and I. <laughs> I undid the earthy end because it's easier than the ends in the points, but it doesn't matter, it's like lifting one leg. And I've slid a piece of paper underneath it to insulate it from the body. And using my trusty AVO, you can only use analog meters for this test, digitals don't work. Hence my love for old, older stuff. Anyway, observing the right uh, polarity, and this one has the right polarity, um, on ohms, if you watch the needle, um, when I touch the body of the capacitor, you'll see the needle cock up and uh, or jump up uh, as, it, as the capacitor charges, and then it should drop back. So there we go, it comes up, now she's dropping back, dropping back, dropping back, but it's stopped about there. And that's about, we're on times 100, and it's 2.5K, two and a half K, so it's 250,000 ohms, it's dropped back to. I would have suspected that would have been a lot lower. So I think that might be a bit leaky, but they vary. I'm assuming that's a 0.1 microfarad, and I've got a, a box of similar ones here, and they're all of that value, so I'm going to take that one. Well, I've already checked it, to be honest with you. And if I put that on the earthy side, hang on, get this right. If I put that on the earthy side and touch this on the body, watch the meter. It cocks up and jumps down. That's about right for me. That sounds, that, uh, I'm more happy with that. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put that uh, capacitor in place of that one. It's got to be about the same value. It's not critical. So we see how we get on. Well, without altering the setting at all, I've lifted the points out. It's only held in by um, one small screw, and then there's an uh, adjustment for altering the gap. Well, I haven't touched the adjustment. I just lifted them out to, in order to take the capacitor off and I'm able to inspect the points that little bit closer. I don't know if the camera is going to show this but yeah just about look that's that's pitting more than I wanted I didn't initially see that but um, I'm not too happy about that so I'll very gingerly stone those um, till I can get two flush faces um, as I haven't a spare set of those um, yeah, that'll be okay, and then I'll fit a new capacitor, and I'll lay you ten to one that'll uh, cure our problems. Anyway, that's the best I can show uh, without a macro camera. I don't really recommend stoning points, but if you can't uh, replace them, you have no alternative. Anyway, that's the that's the finish I've achieved. So we'll go with that. Here we have the points put back in. New capacitor fitted. So it's just a matter now of boxing things up. That cover goes on there. And there's a spring that comes up here and drops over that peg like so. Yep. Oh, and I also put a tiny drop of oil on the sponge to lubricate the, the cam. And the flywheel will go back on. Fingers crossed. Using a decent light and with the aid of a magnifying glass, this is a YPAC uh, magneto. And... Uh, it's marked on here set points 0.018 which uh, with the magnifying glass I'm able to do so we just put the top on. Well as you probably guessed by now a cracking spark now so I'll set this up in a tank and uh, show it running next week and uh, hopefully we'll have more progress on the Enfield Twin so perhaps uh, 
a double, a double whammy there. Thanks for watching.